everyone, it's Sevi. I've seen a lot of comments asking who's more worth it to build, Diona or Toma, which is expected since they're both on the same banner and newer players might be in a dilemma on who to focus on first. That's why I've decided to do a discussion and test comparison video to show what both of them can do as shielders and supports. Now, I know Noelle is also a very good option if you need a shielder, healer, and DPS in one, but in this video, I'll focus on only these two to keep it concise, and since I don't have an equally built Noelle to demonstrate with. We'll be prioritizing comparing Toma's and Diona's shielding capabilities, but since Toma and Diona aren't direct replacements for each other, and there's more to them as overall units, we'll later go over their unique pros and cons for support utility and team synergy. Energy. Let's begin! The most obvious point of comparison is of course their shielding capabilities. We'll do some theoretical discussion of how good their shields are and I'll show you some testing clips to support my points. Both Toma and Diona's shields scale from max HP. Diona generates a shield only with her skill, while Toma generates with both skill and burst. Of course, the caveat to that is Toma is much more reliant on energy for his shield utility. Looking at their skill talent, both have the same calculations for shield damage absorption. At level 11, 13.7% max HP plus 1647. Both also have an absorption bonus against their own elements. However, there are different factors that help differentiate and improve their shields. For Diona, she can do a press skill version that gives a shorter shield duration and skill cooldown. Then there's the hold skill version, which has a longer duration and increases the damage absorption by 75%. At C2, you'll have an increased 15% damage absorption as well. On the other hand, Toma's skill generates the shield, which lasts only for 8 seconds, but its duration can be refreshed by his burst, plus you can stack damage absorption to it by proccing his burst's fiery collapse. He also has a passive that can increase an active character's shield strength up to 25% to reduce incoming damage. So we can just mathematically compute all these because unlike damage dealt, no number shows up when your shield takes hits. So it's hard to approximate damage taken by visual means alone. But still, seeing is believing, so let's see these mechanics in action. My Toma and Diona are using a shield bot build, so they have two-piece tenacity artifacts and full HP percent artifacts. Here are their stats. Toma's HP is 34.5k while Diona's is 32.7k. Diona actually has slightly higher HP substats. A lot of people complain that Toma's base HP is pretty low and I agree that it relatively is. In this comparison though, Toma has a higher base HP than Diona, so despite the difference in substats, the end result is that Toma still has a higher total HP. The defense of the active character is also taken into account for damage reduction on a shield, so to remove that variable, we'll just use the same active character when testing both Thomas and Diona's shields. First, let's calculate how much their shield's damage absorption are using just their skills. Thomas can take 6.3k while Diona's can take 10.7k on C0 and 12.3k on C2. Now in-game, let's demonstrate the skill-generated shield with Diona using the hold version. As you can see, Toma's shield breaks on the second hit, while Diona's shield breaks on the third hit. This is expected since Diona has almost double the shield absorption between their skills. Now let's calculate Toma's shield to its full potential by activating the burst, stacking his blazing barriers, and proccing the additional shield strength. Per tick of his fiery collapse, 1,021 damage absorption is added. The max damage absorption is 17.3k, which is much higher than Diona's when fully achieved. We should also consider Toma's 25% shield strength from his passive talent, which is a big help to reduce the damage the shield receives. For example, if he is supposed to take 10k damage, a 25% shield strength will reduce it to 8k instead. Let's show Diona in action first, using both her Press E and Hold E versions side by side. Now 
As you can see, there are instances of downtime, whether from the shield breaking or expiring. Now let's look at Thomas in action with his shield and burst activated. And as you can see, Toma's shield is able to survive the full onslaught without ever receiving damage on a full rotation of his skill and burst. So some initial unpacking of these data. Toma's shield can take more damage thanks to its high absorption and shield strength. It has the benefit of refreshing and extending its duration with his burst. Additionally, Toma's shield can take more total damage than what his max damage absorption says. Why is that? Because if I'm not mistaken, that max damage absorption only means that that's the ceiling it can reach. He can theoretically take more accumulated damage if he doesn't reach that ceiling, since the shield technically gets damage in between gaining stacks. Let me demonstrate with a metaphor. Say the max amount of water this cup can hold is Toma's max damage absorption. If you remove water, or in Toma's case, take damage or break a barrier, you can just start refilling the cup just as Toma refreshes his barriers. At some point, as long as you keep refilling it, the total amount of the water poured out plus what the cup holds is greater than what the cup can hold. So on talent level 11, and on one rotation of his skill and burst, his shield can accumulate a total absorption of 21.7k on C0 and 24.7k on C2, assuming he gets damaged while gaining stacks. The downtime of Toma's shield is also very minimal, especially with constellations. In theory, it can be on permanently if you can battery his energy to the point where his burst is always ready on cooldown and if you can time your skill and burst activations optimally. Contrast this to Diona's Hold E, which only has a 12 seconds max duration with a 15 seconds cooldown, so that means a downtime of 3 seconds. So if we're talking about raw shield thickness, Toma wins. However, Diona has access to something that Toma and Polearm users are yet to have, which helps her put up a fight. And that is… the Sacrificial Bow. If it's at a high refinement, it's much, much easier to get rid of Diona's shield downtime. In that case, I think Diona's weaker shield is compensated by the Sac Bow, letting you spam it more, thus putting her on a more level playing field with Toma. Now the question is, when we'll get the polearm equivalent of that? On the other hand, Toma's shield cooldown, duration, and total uptime is compensated for by his constellations, so at least his cooldown fix is inherently built into his kit, albeit locked behind early constellations. Simply put, if you're looking for survivability, you can't go wrong with either of these two. Personally, I think that if you're only comparing their shield utility both at least at C2, then Toma wins because his shields have better longevity, can constantly refresh, and provides better overall protection. But if you run Diana with a sacrificial bow, then it becomes more or less an equal choice. But shield thickness shouldn't be your only consideration. In terms of what they can add to your team overall, I think Diana offers a few more things. The obvious being is that she can heal with her burst field. She consolidates the role of shielder and healer into one, like Noelle, which can be more convenient. Then she helps set up melt, freeze, and superconduct reactions. She can also help fulfill the cryo resonance role for teams. She can shield in co-op if you get her C2, which matters to some people. The co-op shield is only at 50% strength, but still, it's something. Toma's shield only applies to you. At C6, her utility skyrockets by being able to give 200 EM with her burst field. That's a lot, and for reaction team comps, it's such a big boost to your overall damage. Toma is a little more niche. Aside from being a good shielder, he offers the following support utilities. He consolidates the role of shielder and pyro resonance instead, which in some teams can be more useful. He's viable in teams with a VV swirler for pyro resistance reduction, the most notable being Hu Tao and VV, and Yormia, Yanfei if you don't have Bennett. Maybe I'm missing some more. 
He also better compliments DPSs that have a DPS window that shouldn't be interrupted. Examples of these are again Hu Tao in her Papilio state, Yoimiya on her skill, Melee Child, and even Raiden on her burst. Because of the refreshing and stacking mechanic, it can stay on for the entire duration your windowed DPSs need. Lastly, at C6, he gives a bonus to your active character's auto attack damage. It's not going to produce damage numbers as big as reaction comps with Diana's C6, but it's still consistent and non-conditional basic attack damage bonus. Toma does one job and he does it really well, but that's about it. Still, that's not to say he doesn't have a place in teams, especially considering future characters who could better synergize with him, but I think overall Diona is more flexible to comp with. Ultimately, which is better for you will depend on what you think you want and need. So that's going to be all for this comparison video between Toma and Diona. I hope this video answered most of your questions regarding your shields and that you now have a clearer idea of who to invest in or put in your team comps. Comment down below which shield are you prefer for your own team comps, I would love to know. If this video helped you out, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and turn on the bell button for future Genshin Impact content. I will see you soon. Take care!